Between March 15th and March 18th of 2023, something insane happened on the surface of the sun. A plasma tornado, which looks absolutely ridiculous. But not only that, on April 27th, 1999, the Hubble Space Telescope pointed its lens towards Mars and saw this. A Martian hurricane. What? Technically, it wasn't a hurricane because, you know, it's not a tropical cyclone. You kind of need an ocean and, you know, we don't need to get into uh, vocab words. But it was a cyclone of some sort. I mean, look at that eye. In fact, this thing measured over a thousand miles wide and the eye was 200 miles wide. Put that on Earth. You want to see what that looks like on Earth? Yeah, absolutely massive. Oh, and did you know that throughout history, many people have claimed to have seen lightning flashes on the moon? What the heck is going on? Well, that's what we're talking about in today's video on solar system weather. Welcome back to the channel. We're going on a journey We're talking about every single planet. But before we get to those planets, let's actually start off with the sun. When it comes to the sun, most don't really think about weather. In fact, many don't even realize the sun has an atmosphere but it does have an atmosphere and it's massive. The sun's atmosphere is broken into several different layers, starting off with the photosphere, followed by the chromosphere, and finally the two outermost layers, the corona and the heliosphere. The heliosphere is so large that it actually stretches out into interstellar space. Now what's interesting about the sun's weather is that it impacts the entire solar system. This is why scientists prefer the term space weather over solar weather, as the sun's weather doesn't really stay within its boundaries but actually gets shot out all over the solar system. Solar storms include both solar flares and corona mass ejections. This is when the sun shoots out massive bursts of plasma and particles. And if these storms are directed towards Earth, they can cause a geomagnetic storm. Geomagnetic storms are the result of solar winds interacting with our magnetosphere, and that's how we get beautiful auroras. Large geomagnetic storms can actually pose a threat to our well-being. In fact, on September 1st, 1859, a massive solar storm hit the Earth in what is known as the Carrington Event. Telegraph wires were fried, auroras were seen as far south as Mexico. If the Carrington event happened today, it would do all sorts of damage to our electrical systems. Satellites would be damaged, communication systems would go down, there would be blackouts. It would not be good. And this actually almost happened in 2012. There was a massive solar storm and it just barely missed us. So we have solar winds and we have solar storms, but let's go back to solar tornadoes. From time to time, solar tornadoes have been known to crop up on the surface of the sun. In March of 2023, a massive solar tornado formed towards the sun's north pole. The height of this tornado was 110,000 miles, or about 14 Earths, which is insane. This footage just is amazing to me. Like first it starts off and there's some disturbances, you know, there's something going on. And then all of a sudden it just takes off. It's such a sweet piece of footage. Speaking of tornadoes, Mercury also has tornadoes, but not the kind you're thinking of. But before we get to said tornadoes, let's just take a quick look at Mercury. Yeah, not much is going on in terms of weather considering it barely has an atmosphere, but scientists did discover an interesting tornado-related phenomenon. Like Earth, Mercury also has a magnetosphere, but Mercury's magnetosphere is weak so weak that sometimes it has massive holes. These massive holes spiral down to the surface of the planet and take on the appearance of a huge magnetic tornado. These magnetic tornadoes expose Mercury's surface to the solar winds. So you wouldn't want to be chilling in you know, the eye of one of these tornadoes. Not that you'd really want to be chilling on Mercury in the first place, considering the surface temp on the dark side is negative 290 degrees Fahrenheit and on the day side is 800 degrees Fahrenheit. I don't know if you could like find like a sweet spot, like, you know, in the shaded area, kind of on the edge of the day and night cycle, you can find a perfect temperature there. Probably not. We're moving on. Now, Mercury didn't offer much in terms of weather, considering it has like no atmosphere. But our next planet, Venus, has all sorts of insane weather. The climate on Venus is not fun. Surface temperatures are around 900 degrees, and the atmospheric pressure on the surface is about 90 times more than Earth. Not an ideal place to hang out, in fact, the planet is so inhospitable that the Soviet Venera probes, at best, only lasted for a couple of hours, which is actually pretty impressive considering how extreme the environment was. Do you want to know what it would sound like to be on the surface of Venus? Well, fortunately for us, 
the Soviet Union's Venera 14 actually recorded its surrounding environment. Take a listen. The clouds on Venus are quite unique as they are mostly composed of sulfuric acid droplets. Venus also has acidic rain. It wouldn't feel good. The clouds on Venus look very similar to towering cumulus clouds here on Earth and cover almost the entire Venusian surface. They are also highly reflective, which is why Venus is so incredibly bright in our night sky. The only objects in the night sky brighter than Venus are the sun and the moon. And I guess, technically, the occasional great comet. And I guess if Betelgeuse went supernova, or if there was a supernova, that would be super bright too. But you know what I mean. Perhaps the most interesting weather anomalies on Venus are its two polar vortices. These are double-dyed hurricanes at both poles that were first discovered by the Pioneer Venus Orbiter in 1979. They were confirmed in 2006 by ESA's Venus Express Orbiter. So what causes these polar hurricanes? Well, while Venus itself rotates extremely slowly, only about once every 117 Earth days, the atmosphere whips around the planet once every four Earth days. The disparity between the atmosphere rotation and the actual planetary rotation is the likely culprit for these polar vortices. Now there's actually a sweet spot in the Venusian atmosphere, about 30 to 40 miles up, that could be very nice for human habitation or for life in general. You'll find that temperatures are very comfortable. The atmospheric pressure is very similar to what it is here on Earth at sea level. Gravity is similar, and you even get radiation shielding from the thick atmosphere. You wouldn't be able to breathe, but who needs to breathe? Just put on a pressure suit. We could build another cloud city. It'd be sick. Next up, we travel to Earth. We're here right now. If you want to know more about our planet's weather, you can just look at any of my uh, historic videos. But quick shout outs to hurricanes, derechos, which are like land hurricanes, tornadoes, all sorts of cool stuff. But we're gonna move on to the moon. The moon doesn't really have much of an atmosphere, so technically there's no weather on the moon, right? Well, flashes of light have been reportedly observed on the moon for centuries. These flashes of light are known as transient lunar phenomenon, or TLPs and they were even reported a thousand years ago. One of the early reportings happened on June 18th, 1178, when five or more monks from Canterbury reported some unusual activity on the moon's surface shortly after sunset. Quote, there was a bright new moon, and as usual, in the phase its horns were tilted toward the east, and suddenly the upper horn split in two. From the midpoint of the division, a flaming torch sprang up spewing out over a considerable distance fire hot coals and sparks that sounds pretty dramatic and there have been many reports similar to that throughout the decades and you might be thinking wow if there's all these flashes on the moon shouldn't we have video of it or something like that well actually we do in february 2023 a japanese astronomer by the name of dachi fuji captured this video So what caused this flash? Well, we actually know what causes the majority of these flashes. They're asteroids impacting the surface. Asteroid impacts are the most likely mechanism behind all of these historic light flashes. In fact, sometimes the crater itself can be found after the event. Like, check this out. Here's the lunar surface before and after a flash impact that occurred on March 17th, 2013. The two images were captured by NASA's Lunar Reconnaissance Orbiter. While the majority of flashes on the moon are indeed impact events from asteroids, scientists also believe that some flashes may come from some sort of electrostatic phenomenon. These lightning flashes occur when gas or dust clouds extend from the surface and give rise to electrostatic discharges. Back to that monk story from earlier, it is believed that the Giordano Bruno crater could have been related to that event, and that would have been pretty epic to see. We are continuing forward to the planet Mars. Mars is probably best known for its large, planet-wide dust storms. Here on Earth, dust storms are pretty localized to specific regions or deserts. Sometimes in the Midwest, we get dust storms from derechos, and who can forget the dust bowl of the 1930s? But on Mars, these dust storms cover the entire planet. They're so massive that their impact can even be seen through ground-based telescopes here on Earth. The Mars Global Surveyor captured this image in June 2001. One month later in July, you can easily see the impact a dust storm can have throughout the entire planet. Here's another example from July 2018. These dust storms can be quite hazardous to scientific probes. Solar panels can get covered with dust, 
and this can cause many probes and rovers to go into a low-powered survival mode for several weeks. I always imagine these dust storms looking like those massive dust storms from Mad Max Fury Road, if you know what I'm talking about. I mean, that's just me. They probably look more like the dust storms from The Martian. Perhaps my favorite natural phenomena on Mars are the dust devils. These are actually quite common on the Martian surface. They form the same way they do here on Earth. Well, the sun shines down on the Martian desert floor and you know it gets pretty hot and then that hot air rises through convection and cooler air comes underneath and then you know you get this like cycle and you get an eddy. This particular dust devil had a diameter of 30 meters and was 800 meters high. I mean that would look like a full-fledged tornado like that's that's a pretty massive dust devil. And I'm sure you want to know what a dust devil sounds like on Mars. Well, we have a recording from NASA's Perseverance rover. Check it out. I, I have a bone to pick. Why can't we get like an actual video of one of these? Uh, I know we have like a series of photos but I would love to just have like an actual video. Like when they sent up the drone, I was like, yo, this is gonna be sick. We're gonna have drone shots of Mars. And then they're like, check it out. And it's like. Which is still cool. Don't get me wrong. I like it. If we had like a straight up video, that would go, that would be number one trending on YouTube. If we had like a nice video of a dust devil on Mars from a drone. And you might be thinking, Jake, that's not important. What's important is, you know, the instrumentation research microscope, you know, the, that, that stuff. I disagree, all right? I think getting people excited for space is key. Maybe we should move on. Mars also features ice clouds very similar to noctilucent clouds here on Earth. These are high altitude ice crystals that attach to small little dust particles. And if we go back to the beginning, remember that hurricane? Those are straight up ice crystal clouds. So this is like an ice crystal hurricane. These Martian cyclones are often referred to as repeating northern annual clouds as they appear around the same time every Martian year. They are short lived and there are many theories as of to what causes them to form. Some say it's very similar to a polar low here on Earth, but it's all still a bit of a mystery. So we're leaving the rocky planets and we're heading out to the gas giants, which by the way have massive atmospheres, which means massive weather events. And we're starting off with Jupiter. Jupiter has so many different vortices and so many different storms, and perhaps the most famous storm in the entire solar system is the Great Red Spot. But what even is the Great Red Spot? Well, it's a massive anti-cyclonic storm system with winds around 250 miles per hour. This storm measures out to be around 10,000 miles wide. Here is Earth as a comparison. Pretty wild. The storm rotates counterclockwise every four and a half Earth days. And you can see this when you check out this time-lapse sequence from Voyager 1's approach in 1979. Now the current red spot has been around since at least 1831, but it is believed that it may be as old as at least the 1660s. Just check out this painting from Donato Credis in 1711. Is this the great red spot? It's a bit hard to tell, but many claim this could be the first depiction. Here's another sketch by Thomas Elger from November 1881. The red spot is definitely on display here, but do you notice something different about this sketch? The red spot is massive. Like, look how huge it is compared to modern photos. In fact, since this observation, the Great Red Spot has actually been shrinking. Currently, like I said, it's about 10,000 miles wide, but 70 years ago, it was 25,000 miles wide. It won't be long until it's not even an oval, it's more circular. So is it going to disappear soon? Uh, we don't know, all right? Is another red spot gonna take its place? Perhaps. Back in 2000, three smaller white spots actually merged together and created a smaller red spot, known as Red Spot Junior or Oval BA. Oval BA is actually still around today. Here's an image of both storms by the Juno spacecraft in 2018. The Juno spacecraft, which launched in 2011, has captured some amazing images of many of these vortices on Jupiter. The spacecraft has a long elliptical orbit that allows it to swoop in real close. Juno has also captured lightning. Here's an image of greenish lightning that was captured on June 15th, 2023. It's time to leave Jupiter and make our way to Saturn. 
When you first look at Saturn, it looks completely different from Jupiter. There's hardly any vortices. But if you take a closer look, Saturn actually has a ton of extreme weather. Every Saturn year, aka every 28 Earth years, large white vortices appear on Saturn's surface. These are often referred to as great white spots, and they usually last for about three Earth years. When the vortices collapse, they stretch out across Saturn's entire atmosphere and can eventually circle the entire planet. Like Venus, Saturn also has massive vortices at both its North and South Pole. Starting off with the South Pole, here are some images captured by Cassini in 2006 and in 2008. It has an eye wall that is 43 miles high and 5,000 miles wide. This storm seems to be stationary with the winds around 340 miles per hour, so higher winds in the red spot. Of course, the North Pole has a famous hexagon shape and also features a massive cyclone of its own in the center. Cassini captured this image on November 27, 2012, and if you zoom in to the central cyclone, you can see this. This is one of my favorite planetary photos in existence. It's just absolutely insane. Cassini also captured images of flashing lightning in 2010. We are going to move on to the final two planets, Uranus and Neptune, and we're going to start with Neptune. In 1989, the Voyager 2 spacecraft approached Neptune and saw a dark spot which has been known as the Great Dark Spot. It also noticed another smaller spot known as the Wizard's Eye, or the Little Dark Spot. I think the Wizard's Eye looks sweet. That just looks, I don't know, something about it looks cool. However, in 1994, when the Hubble Space Telescope looked back at Neptune, the spots were gone. What happened? Well, it turns out that Neptune storms are much shorter lived compared to Jupiter's. In fact, it's believed that half of the time, Neptune doesn't have any storms at all. Neptune does have the most extreme weather in the solar system though, 1500 mile per hour winds. That's insane. Uranus is very similar to Neptune where every once in a while dark spots appear. But not much is really known about these two planets because they're so far away and our only access to them is through the Hubble Space Telescope. So hopefully uh, we can send a probe out there soon to get more info. Pluto. I'm not going to forget about you, Pluto. We don't know much about Pluto. I mean, New Horizons did visit Pluto and there were these like cool looking ice crystal things that were kind of sweet. And Pluto does have an atmosphere. Look at this silhouette photo of Pluto. You can see an actual atmosphere. That's so sick. That's the end of the video. Thank you so much for watching. It was quite the journey, wasn't it? We had a good time. If you can think of any other strange solar system weather anomalies, put it in the comments and we'll see you in the next video.